uh, it doesn't matter who you are as a person but it just matters like what you contributed to the science in in its development process so you like it can be the contribution can be in the form of a paper a patent or anything like that i would want to begin this interaction uh begin this uh, interview with uh, two things primarily one is your background and second is uh, back then almost 5 years before how did the thought of doing a phd and committing yourself to a 5 year course come okay so basically uh, i am a diary engineer i did my btech in a subject called diary science and technology it's related to agriculture so after my btech i went for an, uh, an mtech in diary engineering so that's in a university called national diary research institute and that's where i got interested in this field as 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 a whole i got interested to in doing research so my advisors over there were like really helpful in helping me find out like what are the prospective options that we could be uh, we could have and then thereafter i went to iit kharagpur i went for a P- i started my phd over there um, in agft department and uh, it was uh, there that i got the opportunity to come and do my phd here so i dropped from iit and i came at purdue in 2017 so i am in the department of agriculture and biological engineering and mostly i'm working with powder flow so that's my broad area of research i would want to ask one thing when you said you dropped from iit and went to purdue uh, what was that like why did you drop from iit and uh, you know how what what made you choose purdue over an iit institute so both are really great institutes like iit is also really great but i was like more fascinated in the publication side aspect of uh, the phd because i could see a lot of the applications from uh, purdue it, it's not that iit does not have that but i feel that like i could personally grow like, a bit more if i'm uh, you know coming to purdue and uh, the uh, you know at first like i was not that uh, into going to purdue because like uh, almost everything was settled in iit kgp it was like a very good environment and i al- always had this cultural shock like you know what if when i go there if it's slow like, not a uh, friendly atmosphere all those things like you know what you think when you have to go abroad all those thoughts were there with me but uh, that that was the risk that i took you know it 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 can go worse also it's not not like everything is like you know bed of flowers or something like that but but uh, i i took that risk i thought like you know it, it, after all if i get an international exposure that could help me as a researcher as a fool so i don't regret that because like i i could get like a patent and five publications right now so in a way i i think i'm i'm able to you know uh, at least like achieve partially pass- partially of my all the goals that i had set for myself so science and agriculture or agrotech for that matter is something that is booming in india or i would say has the potential to boom in india uh what is the potential for the same field in the us so uh, actually us has a lot of mechanization for agriculture mechanization and automation as such and uh, the studies here are not just like for example if it is an agriculture engineering research that you are undertaking it's not just limited to agriculture engineering there are other you know it, it's a collaborative research that there are more, more than one departments that come into play for example at least in my research area i can study its powder flow it's related to mechanical engineering it's all or a part of material science so most of the courses that i took personally was related to mech and mechanical engineering and material science courses so it's kind of like i'm applying those principles for uh, you know uh, for for the agriculture and food industry so in a way it's kind of like more collaborative research that you are going to do so it it actually improves the value of the research as a whole uh coming to the second part of it that i wanted to understand which was um, why did you choose a phd uh, and not an ms back then what was your thought process so uh like basically we do phd to become an expert in a field expert in a subject and moreover i feel that like you know in for an ms uh, if you are doing with thesis like you know you do an actual research 
uh, you're just like surfacing on 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 the uh, literature and just conducting an um, a study which has like less objectives so you cannot be considered to be an uh, at least in my opinion you cannot be considered to be an expert in that field but that's the stepping stone so uh, doing a phd you it makes you you know more into that subject like you know you can you'll get to learn what research is about and like how to go deeper into it so in a way it is actually a preparatory uh, program to make you successful as a researcher and one uh, interesting thing at least uh, for my phd was like um, i'm i'm go i'm starting an internship with a company called genentech um, tomorrow onwards so this is this will be my third internship so in a way i was also able to understand what are the researches that are going on um, in the industry too so in a way i could compare like you know how uh, how my phd could be uh, helpful in the industry and like what are the researches going on over there so those are some of the aspects that i actually was thinking when i came here for my phd and it, it it's also you know it's a time consuming uh, process but uh, it it rewards you also like you know at, at the end of the day you will find yourself like doing some some uh, making some contributions to the scientific community as a whole all right that is pretty interesting you know it, it shows that you have done your own share of your homework before uh, going deeper into it uh, i want to understand another thing you know so with phd there's one thing that is associated is that uh, it helps you a lot and i mean obviously apart from your interests and everything uh, the fees also get lowered down a lot in terms of the assistantships that you get uh, a lot of universities pay you a monthly internship as well if you're working with a professor so i want to get in those details if you could throw some light on what were the actual fees that you ended up paying and in addition to it did you receive any assistantship and internship uh, what was that like most universities like uh, do pay graduate research assistantship so i mean i don't know what exactly the fees was like my fees is like something like 600 dollars per semester but i get like paid about 2000 dollars like per month so um that that's not a very big deal to you know and even that like the the fees that we are paying is actually paid by the department like our actual fees might be something like 15000 or something like that but you know all the fees tuition fees etc are paid by the department we just has have to pay the international student fees or something like that like you know, that that's a very small amount that we are going to pay so most of the professors they offer graduate research assistantship I um, mean, you you might be uh, working on some projects like side by side with your PhD objectives. And in some cases, uh, you can be also a graduate teaching. Uh, you might be a uh, teaching assistant too. So if you are really interested to go into academia, you can take that um, as an option. And like you know, you will have to teach um, yeah, several classes, or you might have to assist a professor in in um, in, in a course or something like that. But still. It, it's really interesting because, like you know, it, it's actually a, actually a learning curve. Because for like, at least for me, I was a TA for like about three semesters, I guess. But so for taking like one hour class, you need to prepare at least for four or five hours. So in that way, it's kind of like you know really interesting to see how students learn, <laughs> how they uh, you know sit in the class, like how they learn. Everything is like really interesting. Did you also have any other admits besides uh, Purdue for your PhD? Uh, yes, I got uh, a, a positive response from McGill, um, but I chose Purdue because, like this, uh, the research that I'm doing now is much more aligned with my interest. So that's something like I would recommend to you know those students who are looking for PhD, like you know, uh, always like if you have an in, uh, topic of interest like for working. Uh, for your phd then you will not have to spend a lot of time in learning the subject and actually doing the research and still like you will have like some basic knowledge about what's going on and like you know uh, all those basics if you are really comfortable with it actually can reduce the stress uh, that like you are going to take uh, in, a, in, a, in a, during a phd can you also walk me through uh you know the life of a phd student how is the schedule like how was your routine like so i it, it's like the more literature review you do the better you will be as a researcher so you know you'll have to spend a lot of time learning the papers so you'll have to spend some time for that 
and uh, you know in my case it's more into the modeling aspect and like um I, I and you know it's kind of like pre, uh, some somewhat like theoretical research is also there as a part of my uh, 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 my objectives. So uh, you know the literature review everything takes a lot of time. So it's like something like I, I get up by seven o'clock. I mean probably and then I used to spend at least like two to three hours like you know reading some literature or pertaining to the study in order to gain better understanding of the subject. Uh, I want to get one piece of advice from Karthik, which is for the Indian students who are aspiring to pursue a PhD abroad. Okay, so one advice is like, if you're looking for a PhD here, or if you're like going to conduct some research, I would always recommend you to get, uh, you know, familiarize yourself with publishing a paper or reading literature, because like, you know, if you have an experience of publishing paper, that would be much more easier when you can come here. Um, so that's that's one piece of advice. The second piece is like, uh, you know, do something to improve your skills. That always counts, like because you get less time when you come here to you know improve that. So if you get some time, you know, it can be anything. You don't just don't need to improve your computer skills. It, it can be like participating in different technical competitions, winning awards. So some of the things that you can perform or like, you know, do when you are conduct, you are in your master's or bachelor's that could increase the value of your CV. Uh, I, I would strongly recommend doing it so that like, you know, you have a better CV when you come here and there are more chances that you can end up getting funding too.